Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to session Fartook-85. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the group stifled the efforts of some Grey Cloaks to capture the party and sent them off through the coffer box. Information came back that one of the prisoners was wanted and a healthy reward was obtained for the mysterious patron known as Haggard Toulouse. Fearing additional attacks in Tunis, the group discussed their paltry options and decided on trying to find Hagrid. We rejoin the group as they wait in the stone room for an answer through the coffer box. I can't believe they charged us for information, exclaimed Fargus Stoutheart. Lady Irena spoke up and pointed out that nothing in life is free, especially when dealing with mages. She added that he would pay a sage for information that he needed, and she considered the paltry charge of ten gold pieces exceptional, especially if they gained the information they sought. As time passed, the group grew impatient, but the mage pointed out that a great many things could have to be going on behind the scenes. When challenged, she pointed out that perhaps Hagrid didn't want to be contacted, the people on the other end of the coffer didn't know where he was, or they had to find out, or any other number of possibilities. Cabe suggested that they take turns waiting and offering to take the first watch. Karina noticed a look of disappointment on the face of the watch commander and volunteered to take the first watch. Cabe questioned the waif's override, but then noticed she kept glancing sideways at Tressa. Slow on the uptake, Cabe finally figured it out and thanked her, the waif. The group filed off with Sister Elaine slapping the bard upside the head and chastising him for his aloofness. Taking Cabe by the hand, Tressa led him out of the building as the half-elf mouthed the words, Thank you, to Karina. Watching the group go about their separate ways, she moved over to the stack of parchment and began to quickly scribble on a sheet before stuffing it into the coffer box and knocking three times. Confirming the parchment was gone, she ran over to the entry to make sure no one had seen her actions. Confident, she moved outside nonchalantly and took in the beautiful afternoon by sitting in the grass. Fargus and Bulger announced that they were going to get a drink as Tressa and Cabe wandered off towards the waterfall at the far end of the canyon. The two females discussed their plans with the cleric, pointing out that she needed to make contact with the local church, and Lady Irena wanted to visit the Mage's Tower. Who knows, I may pick up a new spell. The women hugged and went in separate directions. Several minutes later, Sister Elaine entered the chapel and announced her presence. Entering the small temple, she marveled that the glass mosaics covered the walls and several silver chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Scaffolding was present in the center of the room and a deep voice from above greeted her as Reverend Sister. For a moment, she thought she might be hearing the voice of Dilo himself, but then noticed a cleric at the top of the structure. The man was dressed in old robes and covered in paint. Laying on his back, the man appeared to be doing a painted mural that would span the entire ceiling. Sister Elaine marveled at the sketch showing a variety of highlights and then focused in on the work the man was currently doing. Centered above the temple was a representation of the deity Dilo reaching out and touching a young woman on her extended finger. The cleric was shocked as the mortal image bared a striking resemblance to her own face. Caught off guard, the woman flustered as the parson finished touching up an extensive patch of cleavage on the painting. A few moments later, the man finished his work and quickly scaled down the scaffolding to the floor where he warmly greeted the woman. Just before attempting to shake her hand, he noticed he had some stray paint and wiped it off on his robe before finishing the greeting. Inquiring what he could do for her, she apologized and introduced herself. She was sorry for the delay in making contact at the temple but the thought was brushed off by the pious man. No trouble, no trouble whatsoever, Reverend Daughter. You and your friends have been quite busy. I had faith that you would stop by and, lo, my faith has been vindicated. Welcome to the Temple of Dilo in Tunis. Sister Elaine marveled at the expensive furnishings and artistic flair within the temple. The parson beamed with delight and took her hand 
and showed off his holy chamber. The cleric gushed at the beauty of the temple, but the parson would not take credit for it. Dilo guides my hand, and I do his work. I am a mere tool in the hands of my master. The two spoke at length about the teachings before the parson introduced himself. My apologies, dear. I am Father Mathis, and I have heard that you are Reverend Sister Elaine. How may this humble servant assist you today? Elaine pulled out the wand of healing and inquired if the parson could ascertain the particulars of the item. The man moved over towards the altar and located a small polished crystal and he took the item from her. Mumbling to himself, he peered into the glass and examined every crevice on the wooden wand. A rare find indeed, my dear. You have recovered a wand of healing, and a powerful one at that, he exclaimed. Giving the young woman the glass, he pointed to several areas on the wand where he was able to decipher the abilities. Several sections he pointed out on, he elaborated to his findings, which Sister Elaine was able to confirm using the strange gemstone. For the next hour, the pair sat in a pew and examined the hidden secrets carved within the recesses of the item. Marveling at the parson's vast knowledge of the item, Sister Elaine made mental notes of everything divulged to her. She was truly amazed when he showed her a set of hash marks, some of which were discolored. It is my opinion that this area here, he said while pointing, explains the amount of charges or times you may have used the item. You see here there are 16 markings? She nodded and he continued, pointing out that four of them had distinctly different shade. Have you used this item four times? Sister Elaine shook her head and pointed out that she had only utilized the wand for three applications, causing the parson to tilt his head in thought. Hmm. Apparently the previous owner may have used it once, or its maker tested it to confirm its powers. In any respect, this wand will serve you for quite a bit longer when used with due regard. A broad smile crossed the woman's face and she thanked Father Mathis before leaving to head back to the coffer box area and relieve Karina. Meanwhile, the waif was becoming quickly bored and had been taken to walking around the area but remaining within sight of the chamber. As she made another pass, she saw a flash of light from inside the building and sprinted towards the interior. Looking inside the container, she observed a pair of parchments. Pulling them forth, she scanned each quickly before he hearing the familiar voice of Sister Elaine yelling for her. Karina stuffed one sheet into her belt and held on to the other one. We have our answer, she exclaimed gleefully. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, Thanks for listening.